Hey there guys, welcome to episode 10 of my week in review. Um, I've again, once again, I've um, combined last week and the week before that because there wasn't a lot going on last week as I had salute and other things going on. Um, so I've combined them and then I thought about it afterwards and I thought, you know what, I might actually do this just on a bi-weekly basis anyway, uh, sort of every second week as opposed to every week because there's coming up weeks in the next few, it's summer and there's other things going on. So I just might just do this week, instead of doing it weekly, I'm going to do it every second week. And I just combine them into one review. So in, in case you're unfamiliar with this, this is like a little video diary of what I do in terms of hobby related stuff. So gaming, um, painting, and also conventions and things like that. I mentioned the conventions obviously because it was Salute last week, and I'll get back to that in a minute. So first of all, gaming. Um, this week I didn't do a lot, but the week before that I did a ton. Uh, starting off with my midweek uh, Risk Legacy campaign, uh, we went on to day, uh, day game 11, um, so there's only four games left after this, and uh, it was a tough, tough game. Uh, uh, the last couple of games, every time I get really close, I think I'm doing really well, consolidating my position, I'm getting into a strong situation, and someone pulls out some miraculous um, attack or something like that, and ends the, ends the game before I can complete victory. This one, on the other hand, uh, this was the first appearance of the aliens in the campaign, and because um, the, of the the way the event deck works, it's a very it's very weighted into certain phases, and uh, the alien player benefited massively from this one. Every like second event was like gain five troops, gain five troops, so the alien player won this one. Uh, still fun game, and I'm still really looking forward to finishing off the last four games. I need to win. I think at least three of those last four games, and depending who wins the last one, to win the campaign. So, there's it's looking tough. Uh, after that, I always do a little random game after that, um, you know, just to introduce the guys to some new games and stuff like that, because they're kind of a new group. Um, and this time, I brought um, the Resistance Avalon with. Um, I, I haven't played Avalon in a while, actually. Uh, we used to play this a lot, and uh, you know, obviously with all the other sort of um, spy games coming out. This one is taking a back burner a bit, but I brought it out to show them. Uh, we played three games in a row, which was really good fun. I mean, five players is probably the minimum I would play this with. I like to play six or seven, and eight, nine, and so on. Uh, but I think the guys, first the first game was a little bit, you know, not, they're not really sure what they were supposed to do or how to go about it. And I was a little more boisterous than I should be just to get them into the groove of it. But then the next two games went down really well. I love the arguing, arguing and stuff going on in those sort of games. Um, so then, uh, on Friday, or the Friday after that, uh, we had one of our neighbours come around with his son, who's friends with my son, and we played some games with them. So the five of us played Zombicide, uh, just a base game. We played one of the missions from the Compendiums. Uh, I misread one of the rules for the mission. So halfway through the mission, we were cruising through the mission, and then I reread the re mission parameters. I was like, "Oop, I've made a mistake here." So we we slightly corrected it, but uh, we lost on the last section of the game, which was quite frustrating, but uh, it's still really good fun. Uh, and then after that, we played a DC deck building game. I still only got the base game, but I've played this a good few times now, and I really enjoy it. Uh, so I'm definitely going to start getting some of the expansions in for this. Uh, Carla won that quite convincingly. She got more than double all our scores, so that was that was pretty cool. Uh, on the Saturday, um, we had a bit of a mixed session. Where we decided to go down the lighter route uh, rather than play something heavy. Also, there was only the three of us, as one of the guys couldn't make it. Uh, so when Alan arrived, we played Tomahawk. It's just a small little two-player game from Matagot. Um, I really like it. It's really interesting. It's just a really simple little area control um, sort of bluffing game. Uh, Alan won that. Uh, then we played Bang the Dice Game. I've never played Bang the Dice Game, but because we were only three, there's a little three-player version, but I suspect it's not as good as what um, the five and six, say, player version is. Uh, but we played that, and <laughs> both me and Alan died in the same turn to the Indians shooting us with arrows, which was quite funny, which gave Martin the win. Uh, after that, we played a couple of games of Rhino Hero. Martin knocked over the tower both times, so... Uh, they gave me and Alan a win each. A run here is a fun little game, isn't it? It's just uh, just build a tower, have a little laugh. It's a, it's a really solid, interesting game. And I, I think I might have to pick up a copy as well. Uh, after that, we tried my first game of Abyss. Um, 
I can't remember who makes the bisque, but it's uh, I got it off the trade uh, on the Facebook page. I traded uh, Dark Darker Darkest for it. And we played our first play of it, and I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. Nice, nice, simple, easy, solid game. Really looking forward to playing some more of that. Uh, after that, we played Titanium Wars. Uh, Alan really wanted to try this. Uh, we played the first game, which went really quickly. I mean, we're talking about 10, 15 minutes, and Martin had won the game. Both both missions done. Uh, Alan was like, no, I want to try that again. I, I want to do it again. So we played again, and the second game lasted much longer, probably easily an hour, hour and a half, which was quite interesting, um, which I won. And that was my first win in Titanium Wars. Woohoo! So uh, that was good fun. I still enjoy Titanium Wars a lot, and uh, it's a very random, fast, crazy game, um, but I think I might have to look into getting the expansion and maybe even the promo card on BoardGameGeek. Um, after that, we played Nations the Dice Game. Uh, we played it because it's a really fast game and that was the theme of the night just going for fast game fast games you know quick short easy blast games uh, we played nations the dice game martin won that alan came to, alan was the first time he played this so we played that so he could show in the game and because it goes so quick and then after that we played it again um where we could film at that time and we put the film up on gaming nights um i'm still not convinced by nations the dice game uh, you can see obviously my overview of it on my channel uh, but in the second game, I won. But um, I heard there's an expansion coming out for this, so I'm definitely going to look into that. And then to finish off the night, we played Port Royal. Uh, Port Royal is a nice little fast, sort of push your luck kind of game. Um, I actually play, I played it quite a lot in the last year and a half. Uh, since, in fact, I got it last year at the Expo. Uh, so it's coming up to a year of having it now. And uh, I introduced it to a lot of people, and uh, everyone, it always goes down well with everyone. I know there's an expansion for that out now as well. So maybe considering I'm going to the expo again, maybe I should pick up the expansion at the expo. Um, and then, that was the end of our gaming nights. So the Sunday, uh, my family and I were just hanging out, you know, doing some things. So we decided to play a game of CV. Uh, we taught my son how to play this, Alex. Uh, but me and Carla have played it before. And it was a really close game. Carla won on 64 points and me and Alex tied for 61. Um, I got the tiebreaker, which was less cards in my CV. But uh, uh, it's a strange game, this. I really enjoy the CV because it's very similar to, like, say, Nations of Dice game. Those type of games where you just Yahtzee style, rolling the dice, trying to get the combinations you need to buy new cards and gain points. Um, but this one has this particular mechanic that when you roll the dice, if you roll three bad luck faces, you lose a card. And I rolled that on my second and third turns, which is really freaking annoying. It's just luck, you know, you just roll the three, four dice. Oh, I've got three smiley face, uh, three bad luck faces. So that's kind of a little frustrating. You know, uh, I don't know, that it sometimes um, brings down the enjoyment of the game. But otherwise, I pretty much like it. Um, and then that was it for that week of gaming. And then the following week, um, which was just, I had a big painting project and I just knuckled down to do that, um, which we'll get to in a minute. So the only game I played in the following week, which was after Salute, was StarCraft the board game. Uh, we played a big five player game of that. Uh, all of us were playing it for the first time. And it was pretty cool. I really liked it. Um, D won by the time limit factor because he was pl playing the the yellow um, Protoss race, and they if they get a certain couple of cards out, which only comes out towards the end of the game, then they win, which was gutting because I was so close to winning. I already had reached the 15 point limit, and I just needed to go probably another turn or two, and then I would have got. Well, in fact, I almost completed my victory goal condition as well. So I was almost winning by two different ways. But D won it. Uh, I came second. Ash and Alan third and fourth. And Martin lost. So that was the games we played over the last two weeks. Uh, really good, solid games. Um, over the last those two weeks, if I had to choose a game of the two weeks period, I would have to probably go... I mean, there's a couple of good contenders, but I think um, Abyss... I think that one was the more in interesting one for me over the last week or so. I mean, there was a couple of good games, obviously. I, I still enjoy CV and StarCraft was a big, nice, heavy game, which is the type of games I like. Um, but I think Abyss was just a nice, sweet spot game. I think it'll go down well with Carla as well. She hasn't played it yet, but we'll get to that. Uh, so that's everything I did for gaming.
and now we move on to my painting side of things so I I had one project that I was working on feverishly to get done which was a second head blah ball team I spoke about that in the last um, re weekend review I did um, so here's the photos of the completed set as you can see it's got the old styrofoam board which uh, we painted up Edward took I tell you what, that, that was an interesting thing to do because the styrofoam kind of draws in the paint. So it, I probably spent about three pots of Skaven Blight Dinge just to get the base coat on and the dry brush on and that sort of thing. And I thought the skull and the face came out brilliantly. I really enjoyed painting that. Um, from the orcs and the humans, because they're all one figure, it's just literally basically painting two figures just over and over and over and over again. Uh, which was interesting. It's, it pushes you to the limit, especially when you're doing it for as a commission. You know, you don't tend to, when you're doing your own thing for yourself and you know you're going to get the reward of playing the game in the future with a nicely painted team and a cool looking board and that sort of thing, it doesn't, you don't mind so much. But when it's, you know, just a, like, I'm going to get this done, then send it out, I mean, yes, you get paid for it, but it, it does weigh on you sometimes and you think, oh man, this is tough. This is really tough. Um, but I got it done and I think it came out really nice. Um, I posted up some pictures on my page. Facebook page painting nights and I've put it up on the blood bowl section to show some of the guys um, so I thought it came out nice um, I mean this is not the only thing I worked on uh, generally when I put up the pictures here on this on this weekend review I'm only putting up pictures of things that I've completed um, things that I've been working on I tend to sort of just keep that till when it's finished but I have been working on other some figures <laughs> mostly imperial assault stuff as usual as I, uh, I think I've got a freaking chair full of imperial assault stuff still coming out um, but yeah, so that is basically all I have completed for, for the painting side of things. Uh, interesting job, and I'm looking forward to doing some more for this custom in the future. Uh, then, to finish off my week in review, um, we'll talk about Salute. Uh, we went to Salute on Saturday the 16th of April. Uh, my son Alex went with, and uh, we went with Molo, John, and Bennett as well. Uh, we got there just after 11, I think, we around about there, so we missed the massive queues of people queuing up to get in at the doors opening at 10. Um, so we just walked straight in, got our goodie bags, walked straight in, and then had a look. But that's not to say it wasn't busy. Man, it was busy. It was crazy busy. And uh, this is kind of the thing, I, I've been thinking about uh, Hustle. I really enjoyed it. There's some fantastic tables, great atmosphere, loads of friendly people, loads of things to look at, tons and tons of inspiration there. The problem I have is I don't feel that Salute is moving with the times. I mean, you've got the Expo, which is now like almost a four-day event, really. You've got Adepticon, Gen Con, SN, all longer day events with a lot more to, you know, getting the more the benefit out of it. Whereas with Salute, it's just a one-day shopping event. So you just, you get in through the door and then you go shopping and get the hell out. Um, the problem I have with that is obviously you, sp you spend 12 bucks to get in and you're spending... 15, 20 bucks to get there. Um, you're spending a lot of money just to go shopping. But in saying that, I mean, I, I don't really go to go do shopping. I mean, I'll show you a picture here of what I've got, which was just a couple of supplemental stuff to the things I do. Uh, I've got some Frostgrave cards. I've got some Deadman Hand you know, um, decks. Uh, I've got a few freebie miniatures and things like that. I've picked up a few Blob All figures for my son. So nothing amazing that I picked up. That I'd go, wow, I need to, I needed to go there to get that. But I normally go just for the inspiration of things. Um, and if you're interested in seeing all the stuff that was there, on my um, Battle Knights channel, I've put up a Salute Expo Convention video with a ton of pictures of all the great looking tables and miniatures and stuff for there. The pictures aren't, some of the pictures aren't all the best because I'm a rubbish photographer. Uh, but I'm working on it. Uh, and I've got a little few videos as well and a, a few thoughts from myself. Um, but suffice to say, I really enjoyed it, and I'll definitely go back next year. Um, and I'm looking forward to some of the other conventions going on. We've got Tabletop Day in a couple of weeks' time, and then we've got um, the Expo, the UK Expo in Birmingham, Dragon Meet later this year. There's supposedly a new convention starting up in Telford, is it? Um, haven't heard much of that. Um, and obviously, there's a few other Wargame shows. I'm going to go to Mantic Open Day as well. So, lots to look forward to, lots to enjoy. Um, I really, really enjoy the hobby. It's, it's been such a fantastic time to enjoy, especially during the summertime with all the crazy cool stuff going on. 
uh let me know what you guys think i mean uh, what conventions and expos and things are you going to let me know maybe we can meet up and have a beer or something and uh thanks for watching cheers